What does it take to reach agreement in a national debate that involves a lot of complexity? How can we all get on the same page as we start to understand the impact, for instance, of different tax policies? Well, I sort of see debates in four categories. We can argue back and forth, and I can say, well, I'm right, and you can say, well, you're right, and we can get into a he said, she said sort of situation. We can say, look, let's be a little smarter. I think I'm right because my system worked in the past, or maybe I'm right because my system works in other countries. Unfortunately, both of these arguments, you can say, well, you know, the past in other countries are different than our countries, so I disagree. I think there's a fundamentally new approach that we can use, which is open up the hood, stop arguing about why the car's breaking down, open up the hood, and you can check to see whether it's a spark plug or a fuel pump. And let me show you how we can do that when we're talking about uh, the United States economy. Let's start at a really simple level. Let's think about the economy as being broken up into the government, businesses, and consumers. These influence each other in different ways. Uh, consumers obviously purchase things from business and uh, that's their spending pattern. Government has revenues from taxes and expenses through uh, folks that it hires as well as things that it buys from business. And of course, business makes money by selling things to consumers and to the government and uh, that money can be measured in terms of its profit. So these are really the three key parts of, of any economy and we can measure the success uh, or the failure of an economy in part by looking at the unemployment rate as well as the GDP. So what I'd like to talk about is how we can use a model like I'm going to show you to examine three different tax rates and you can look at these three lines here. One is a tax rate where middle earners um, earn, uh, pay, pay about the same taxes as, as upper income earners, but folks who don't earn very much, uh, they have a, a lower tax rate. Here's a place where we've reduced the income tax that the high wage earners make, and uh, to make up for that so we can keep the same government revenues, we've got uh, higher taxes paid by lower income folks. And then the last strategy is uh, a, a lowering of the middle class income tax while we keep the uh, upper class income tax uh, much higher. So the question is, how can we use a simulation, a modeling approach to deepen the debate, to get more sophisticated? And let me say I'm not an economist, I'm not claiming this model is correct. Instead, what I want to show you is how we can use this kind of an approach to have much more informed conversations so it's not all that he said, she said sort of stuff that we were talking about. So let's begin by looking at what that first tax policy might produce. It's designed to be pretty much what we have here in 2012. And what you can see is when I start the simulation of the economy running, I get some kind of strange behavior at the beginning, but after a while things settle down and I have a GDP around $12 trillion and an unemployment rate around 7.86%, which is, which is within spinning distance of, of what we see today. So what happens if I change to this high income tax reduction policy where we're reducing the taxes that wealthy um, earners have to pay? So here, please continue to watch uh, this graph at the left as I run the simulation. You can see as soon as I change the tax policy, we're going to see some immediate impacts on uh, the United States, specifically this uh, GDP blue line is dropping quite considerably but the unemployment rate is going up. Now, I'm not say saying this is a correct model. What I'm saying is now we can have an informed debate. If you disagree with what this model shows, and I don't know if this is correct, but it shows that if we lower taxes on the very wealthy, we don't actually get a big benefit. The unemployment rate gets worse and the GDP gets worse as well. What we can do with this model is we can drill down into some of the specific parts of this what does the engine look like? Let's open up the hood. And underneath the hood of this thing, we have a model of how fixed income consumers uh, operate, how their money flows. We have a model of businesses and how uh, inventories interact with production and how those interact with sales. And we can start just like anybody who's a car mechanic might do. We can look at each piece of the engine one at a time and we can see where do we disagree. And what I'm proposing is that our debate can get to be a much more sophisticated level and most importantly that we can get to a place where we can reach agreement. If we don't think this model is correct, we can look underneath the hood and we can understand why and propose perhaps something different. 
So just to finish things off, let's take a look at what happens if we have that third text policy. I'm going to rerun the baseline. So again, I'm going to let this model stabilize to approximately what we see today uh, using that first tax policy that has uh, kind of a, a, a gradiated impact on the middle incomes as well as the wealthy. And again, this stabilizes out to about 7% um, unemployment. So the question now is, what happens if we change the tax policy to one in which uh, we actually tax the wealthy at a higher rate? And we're going to do that at the same time that we reduce taxes on middle income earners. So let's go back and let's take a look at what's happening to the model now that I've made those changes. What you can see is that the unemployment rate has dropped substantially and the GDP has risen. And so we do see quite a substantial difference with this policy if we would implement it today compared to um, uh, what's been going on over the last few years. Um, also, very interestingly, we, we kind of get a couple of phases. We get these what we call transient effects as kind of the economy re-equilibrates. And then what we're seeing is an unemployment rate, sorry, a GDP that goes up quite high. And then it looks like it's very gradually reducing until it gets to this flat place. And then we see little bumps in the GDP. These reflect kind of the normal business cycle that's based on inventories and production interacting with sales. So again, the point here is not necessarily that this is correct, but now we have a place to disagree. Now we can say, look, if you don't think this is right, if you don't think this is what the economy is going to do, let's look at some of the mechanisms. Let's open up the hood. Let's look underneath the model that I have for how governments, businesses, and consumers interact with each other and how they behave internally. And let's start to understand what's going on here and whether you have a proposed model that actually differs in behavior that shows that this doesn't work as well as I've been able to discover it works using this model. Thanks for your time.